Okay, so um, I wanted to take um, my time to show you guys how I organize my Canvas pages. It's definitely different from um, Jen's because I don't do the, like the folders and the modules. And the reason is because I felt like it, it's more simpler for me to explain to students um, where to find material if they email me. Um, so let me just share my screen and show you um, an example of my Canvas page. Um, and I'm using a developmental course so that you guys don't see like student names and stuff. So, okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so this is um, like a developmental shell for an eight week summer English 101 class. And um, my course begins with a quote. Um, you know, this one is a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. And then here is where I've uploaded my syllabus. So like if students email me and say, hey, where can I find the syllabus? I just say from the homepage of the Canvas page right under the quote. And it's just really easy for them to find it. Um, and then I just have all of the assignments for the entire semester listed here in chronological order based on the due date. And um, I know that I could have modules and folders and, you know, like, you know, really interesting and beautiful looking, um, you know, icons and things like that. But for me, I just felt like it's so time consuming for me to create those icons and I get, I feel really overwhelmed, but I'm, I'm learning a lot from the tools that Jen showed. So maybe I'll use them to, you know, make my Canvas page a little bit more inviting. But this is basically how I, you know, um, organize my Canvas shells. Um, and I do this at the very beginning of the semester. I have all of my assignments for the entire semester already listed because I want to tell students, like, I want you to look ahead um, in week two. I want you to look ahead in week three, in week four. I want you to make your schedule and your calendar um, and things like that. So the very top of my Canvas home shell has all of the quizzes, all of the assignments, the discussion boards, you know, uh, where to submit final papers. And then here is where I have my OER. Um, so they can just like click into any of this, you know, week two. And then I have, you know, the reading assignments and the YouTube that they have to watch right then, right then and there. And then they just go to like week two quiz and take the quiz on these readings. Um, but what I'm really excited to show you guys is how I, because I'm an English teacher and we have a lot of papers that we have to grade. So throughout the years, I found um, like little ways to cut down on my grading of student essays, but yet still give them, um, you know, great feedback. So the first thing I did was I created myself like a little comments cheat list. Um, and it's just like a Microsoft Word document of like the comments that I frequently make all the time. So like, for example, like if they have MLA formatting issues, I have like this comment and then I'll go to like find or I, I press control F and I open up my, you know, search box and then I'll type in like sample Hold and then it'll up. go. Huh? We're still seeing your canvas. I'm not sure. If oh, you're oh. oh, my bad. Thanks for telling me. Okay. All right. Okay, so yeah, I'm sorry. I okay. thought you guys could see my Microsoft Word document. Okay, yeah, now we so, can. Yeah, I created this like Microsoft Word um, document of like the most common comments I tend to repeat a lot. And they're usually like grammar punctuation stuff. Um, and so I created this cheat list for, cheat, cheat list for myself. So as I'm grading, um, and if I want to say, okay, you have comma slice frequent frequently in your paper, I just go to control F and type in comma splice. And then like here is a comment that comes up, watch out for comma slices, this video will help. And then I just copy and paste this into my, you know, my students paper. And so this has helped me like avoid typing so much because I, I, I got a wrist injury um, about a year ago, um, just from typing so much and responding to a lot of student papers. Um, again, I use this just for giving like low level feedback, like grammar and punctuation stuff, but I use a different program called Dragon um, to speak comments and then it types it for me. And this way I avoid typing so much with my hands and my wrist. Um, and I paid $100 to buy this Dragon 
uh, software, but it, it really, um, it really helped me not only with giving like really good, strong critical thinking feedback to students, but also decrease my um, time in terms of commenting on student papers. So I'm going to show you guys my Dragon software real quick and how I use it to respond um, to people or to my students. So um, do you guys see my homepage on my, on my desktop on my computer? It's messy. No, okay. It says screen sharing is paused. Okay. So you probably see my messy desktop, right? Yes, okay. So this is my Dragon software. I bought it for $100. I just downloaded it and it's on my desktop. Um, when I double click on it, it opens up. It takes a couple of seconds to open up. And then once it opens up, I have this bar at the top of my desktop. It takes a couple of seconds to load. Um, I bought it for, I bought it like maybe two or three years ago. So maybe they have a new updated version that's a little bit faster. Um, but do you guys see my Canvas page now? Okay, and then so here's like the red button and then I'll just like go to, you know, a discussion and I'm like trying to like respond to a student's, you know, post on their discussion. So like, for example, essay one brainstorm activity. And then um, I'll go to like reply and I'm trying to like, reply to a student and then this opens up. I can give them like a video comment, which I do, but sometimes students like to like cut and paste things or look up a word. So that's why like, uh, you know, a text comment might be better. And then I just turn on my, my dragon and I'll say, dear student, comma, next line. Hold on, sorry, this doesn't really happen, but. Dear student, comma, next line. I really like the ideas that you shared here, period. I think your brainstorming is taking you to some intellectual territories that may be new, period. I suggest that you look at some YouTube videos, comma, and read some of your peers' responses. You look at your peers' responses as well to get more ideas, period. Next line, best comma, next line, Pega. And so it'll type for me, and for some reason it doesn't like capitalize, but I just go back and capitalize, and then I just press post reply. And this way, um, I don't really use my hands to type as much, and um, it's just a little bit easier for me to grade and comment and you know, respond to discussion posts. So that's that for me.